Welcome back, ladies and gents. On today's show, Audi's coming for Tesla, Ram's coming for the tiny truck market, and some classic cars are coming for your wallet. Plus, the best Bond cars not made by Aston Martin. I'm Tiffany Stone, and this is Haggerty's Daily Driver. Let's buckle up. Remember when the Volkswagen Audi Group got in just a little bit of trouble for massively cheating the regulations for their diesel vehicles? Of course you do. But Audi is doing everything it can to make you forget with their latest electric car offerings. For the moment, that's the Audi e-tron crossover and the hatchier sportback version. They're fine. I mean, they look like Audis, but they've only got about 222 miles of electric range. It's kind of like the Sierra Mist of electric cars. It's sort of there, and while I wouldn't go out of my way to order one, I wouldn't refuse it if someone gave me one. Now, Audi seems to realize this and is making a big deal about their new Tesla Fighting e-tron GT. This looks to be a slinky electric four-door fastback, not unlike the Audi S7, and it'll also be made on the same production line as the Audi R8. What's even better, because electric cars don't create much sound, Audi is trying to make the e-tron GT the best sounding electric car ever made. How you ask? Well, by blending 32 different audio tracks to create the car's unique sonic profile. Just take a listen. Sometimes an idea may seem exceptional. The company used a remote control helicopter and even a didgeridoo. We'll see more of the Audi e-tron GT before the end of the year and with a price around $75,000, we'll see if customers think of it more as a didgeridoo or a didgeridon't. Nice dad joke, Matt. <laughs> Not since the long-abandoned Dodge Dakota has Fiat Chrysler built a small truck for the American market. Well, now they have. It's just that it's only for the part of the American market that exists south of the border. This is the Ram 700, and it's about as tiny as a truck gets. As Autoblog reports, this is the Ram rebadged of the Fiat Strata for the Mexican market. This tiny truck is basically an economy car with a mullet, and yet there's something kind of charming about it, especially in the big, tough Laramie trim. Now you ask, how trucky is the 700? Well, not so much. It comes stock with an 84 horsepower four banger, though you can get a turbo version that puts out a crazy 98 horsepower. All models are front wheel drive, and it seems like all models are also only available with a five-speed manual transmission. Now, would you buy something like this? What if they called it the Rampage? Get it? Rampage? <laughs> I don't know. Let us know in the comments down below. It's Monday, which means that it's time to play our favorite game, You Paid What? You Paid What? Up first, and speaking of trucks, there's this gorgeous 1971 Chevrolet K5 Blazer. When Ford decided to make an SUV, they engineered a brand new vehicle. Now, when Chevy decided to make an SUV, they just shortened their truck and put a top on it. Literally genius. However, this particular model shows only 17,000 miles on the clock and looks almost factory fresh thanks to a recent refresh. Power comes from a 350 small block V8, putting power out through a dual range transfer case. The car was listed on Bring a Trailer and when the auction closed, it went for, wait for it, $50,500. You paid a lot? <laughs> the old truck market is where it's at. All right, moving on from trucks to RVs. RVs are hot right now, you know, with people trying to escape into the woods, but there are still some deals to be had. Like this Winnebago, which showed up on cars and bids with no reserve last week. From the outside, it doesn't look that different from your average Winnie adventurer. But look a little deeper and you'll realize it basically has no interior. Why, you ask? It's a freaking command center. Now this was built for NBC to be a mobile broadcast center, which is why it has so much open floor space. You could do anything with it. You could make it a mobile office or hey, start a pirate radio station. And someone got it for $14,200. You paid what? So lucky, such a great deal. I'm super jealous about this one. Coming up, 
we look at the best Bond cars not made by Aston Martin. But first, check out this old Winnebago commercial. Winnebago Spring Valley. Winnebago. Now's your chance to see all the Winnebagos. James Bond's life is hard. He's got a job with a lot of travel. He has to work with a lot of unsavory people. And the life expectancy in his line of work isn't that great. But he does get to drive really cool cars. While most of those are Aston Martins, Bond has actually wheeled a lot of other cars that didn't come from the small British car maker. So our own Nick Berg put together a list of the 10 best Bond cars not made by Aston Martin. First up. In Dr. No, the first time we ever see James Bond behind the wheel of a car is on a dirt road in a Sunbeam Alpine. And to make things even more exciting, he's being chased by a LaSalle hearse. Not to give away the movie, but James Bond does get away. In a very different look, Roger Moore and Melina Havelock have to escape in For Your Eyes Only in none other than a Citroën 2CV. It's probably the least powerful Bond car ever built, but also kind of the best. If you can escape the bad guys in a 2CV, you deserve the title of the world's best secret agent. Now you can go to Haggerty.com media or click the link below to see the full list. Well, that's all for me today, but I'll be here all week bringing you the latest car news. Until then, keep driving.